In this year's IMF and World Bank's biannual meeting, Zambia is the focal point. What is the debt situation in Zambia, and what are the role that China and the U.S. play? Yeah, so Zambia is one of the the African states that has gone into default. Now that is to say, that it has essentially stopped servicing an important part of its of its debts. And uh, Zambia was one of the first uh, countries to to do so. It was, became a victim of this situation during during the the pandemic. And Zambia has already had a long standing reputation of this kind of being this kind of boom and bust country. It's a big exporter of copper in, in particular. And so whenever the copper price is high,、uh, things would seem to be good. The Zambian government would spend a lot of money, and then the copper price would come down or would crash, and then、um, all of a sudden the money would would go too, and Zambia would be faced with a debt problem. Now, interestingly, in the last twenty thirty years or so. China has increasingly moved into mining in Zambia, and as part of that move into mining, also increasingly made、uh, different funding lines available to the Zambian government. When the Zambian government therefore defaulted on its on its debts a couple of years ago, one of the first victims, if you like, of that was the Zambian government's willingness to repay、uh, China. So China has a has a big incentive in sometimes sorting out this this situation, getting Zambia to at least serve some of its debts. It has a longstanding and good relationship with Zambia, but at the same time. It also knows that many other African countries are watching and are hoping. Well, if Z- if Zambia manages to extract some concessions from China. For example, that China says, "Okay, you know, we agree that you only repay,、uh, as I said, sixty or seventy percent of the money that you actually owe to us." Other African countries may demand the same thing, and that could be a, a problem for China. You know, being being generous vis-à-vis one country, if you like, is quite easy, but you're always worried it's going to create a precedent that others are going to see it and say, "Hey, wait a minute, we should ask exactly the same thing. We should do the same thing as the Zambians did," and that will. Get us,、uh, get us a better deal from the Chinese and maybe even from from other from other creditors. So there's been a lot at stake、uh, for China. There's also a lot at stake, as I said earlier, for the IMF and the World Bank. Yeah, and in particular, the ones overseeing the institutional framework within which is is happening. It's something that is known as the Common. Framework for debt treatments, and it essentially、uh, entails bringing together all the all the major creditors of a of a country,、um, including at least in theory private sector creditors, all of whom will coordinate a position among themselves, and then come to an agreement with the with the debtor country、um, to say, okay, we can reschedule, you,、uh, you can sorry, we can restructure your debts.、Uh, here is what we what we propose for you to to return. Uh, to the situation before you you defaulted.、Um, again, for the IMF and the World Bank, this is very important. This is their flagship global global initiative of the last couple of years.、Um, they want this to succeed. They want China, Zambia, and other creditors to reach an agreement. But as always, who will pick up the tab? Who is willing to let go of some money? That's a very difficult negotiation. It's been it's bra- been dragging on for a while.、Uh, the United States has tried to increase the pressure. On the different actors to do that, the United States is not a big creditor in the、uh, in the Zambian space. So that always makes it easier uh, to uh, to talk tough when you don't actually have money、um, dependent on it. For African countries, what kind of major differences are there? In regards to debt reconstruction between the U.S. and China, and what are the reasons behind? They can be quite stark. I mean, if most American creditors are private sector, and most on the Chinese side are either you know fully the Chinese state or what are known as policy banks, which nominally speaking are are independent, but de facto we know have very close ties to the Chinese Communist Party or even fully fully under its.、Uh, Under its supervision, that does have important implications, of course, on what kind of restructuring you have in mind. You have identified a number of African countries. I think more than twenty that are near or in danger of debt distress. If you insist that it's only creditors on the public sector side who take it, that essentially in many countries means that that you're only talking about China. 
you're leaving aside most of the Western characters, who, as I said, are mostly private sector uh, in nature. If you insist that both public and private characters must be part of any any restructuring, it also means that Western characters come come you know appear on the radar. So in that sense, there's quite a lot riding on it. These, these things may sound very technical, and they, in a sense, they are. But there's very obvious political implications to this, and, and everybody knows that. Um, you know, the United States, the U.S. Treasury has long been quite protective of, of Wall Street and the interest of the U.S. financial industry. Very similarly, China is quite protective of its policy banks, of the China Development Bank, of the Exim Bank, to some extent of ICBC. Uh, from an African standpoint, you get an arrangement where both on the public side and on the private side, um, significant concessions are made and African countries can lower the amount of uh, debt repayments that they have to meet in the near future. Um, but that's not, 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 not very easy at all. Um, getting especially the private sector on board, there's a, a, a range of mechanisms that make that, uh, technically speaking, very hard. And of course, if you then also have certain countries that uh, politicize the debt debate even more than it already is, that makes a resolution even even more difficult.